Make a date with Reverend Dr. Ebenezer Markwe at 6 a.m. from Monday to Saturday on Graphic Online via Facebook and YouTube as he expounds on matters of faith. Graphic Online, truth and accuracy every day. Hello, this is Reverend Dr. Ebenezer Marquis of Living Streams International. We meet behind the trade fair, behind Zenith College, bringing to you Matters of Faith with Graphic Online. The title of today's uh, message is Papa, Oh Papa. I read a very interesting story in uh, 1 Samuel chapter 10. In 1 Samuel chapter 10, you know, when Saul had been anointed, Samuel had called him and had spoken to him about some things that were going to happen to him. He was going to be made the king of Israel and all the things that... Then someone said something that was very intriguing for me. He said, when on your way, going back home, you meet a band of prophets who are prophesying. And truthfully too, in 1 Samuel chapter 10, Saul met those people. He met those band of prophets and they were prophesying. And the Bible said they were prophesying with the psaltery and the harp and the cymbals. And then someone told him, the anointing is going to come upon you and you would also prophesy with them. And truthfully too, an anointing came upon Saul and he began to prophesy with them. And the way he was prophesying, then the Bible says in verse 12, and it's the verse 12 that is key, very, very important for me. Now, Saul was prophesying and he was, I mean, boy, he was having fun, you know, prophesying. I mean, I mean, it's a company of prophets and they're prophesying. And then somebody asked the question, is Saul also among the prophets? Is Saul also among the prophets? That when did Saul become a prophet? But well, that was a statement of uh, astonishment or like wonder. Is Saul also among the prophets but then the verse 12 is where the key is and the bible said then somebody also asked but who is their father the word there that I'm, i want us to look at the but and the sentence is but who is their father now that word but there is 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 very intriguing for me because it's it speaks of a negative you get it Oh, this girl is very, very pretty, but when she opens her mouth, that guy, that guy is, 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 a very, is well spoken, you know, but man, his temper, this person that but, you know, that word but there puts a question mark to the first statement. So is Saul also among the prophet, but who is their father? That is the question that I was asking. Now I began to wonder what's going on over there. That means something is going on that is making somebody raise the eyebrow. Who is in charge of these people? Now, in those days, all the prophets, they belonged to prophetic schools. And when I say they belong to prophetic schools, they had to, Samuel had a school in Ramah, Samuel had a school in Bethel, and then also, if you remember, Elijah had a school in, in Gilgal, he had a school of the prophets in Bethel, he had a school of prophets in, in Jericho, and then he had a school of the prophets in Joshua. That means all people who were prophesying had somebody over their lives who was speaking to them. Who was bringing correction to them who was correcting them you don't do this you don't do that and i want to tell you something that band of prophets when they said but who is their father that like, who's in charge of them who is speaking into their lives who is correcting them who would look at them and say not with the eye of just uh destructive criticism but constructive criticism who is speaking into their lives who is bringing correction to them and i want to tell you this what was happening there was a little bit, for me, it's a little bit clumsy. Now one, they were prophesying with the psaltery and the harp and the cymbals. So guess what? One of them will get up and say, Yeah, my children, I the Lord, I'm moving like a caterpillar. Then somebody will they'll just play the cymbal. Another person too would, would start prophesying, then somebody too will play the harp. For me, it was like a lawless prophetic movement. That is, there was no order. The key to the prophetic or the key to prophecy Paul said, let everything be done decently and in order. So you know one thing? That thing that was going there was a little bit of disorder. They were prophesying with the psaltery and the harp and making noise and all those other things. And Saul also joined that company and he was prophesying for a very, very long time. Now, if remember, there, there's a prophetic order and another prophet, let two or three speak and then let the others confirm. So everybody was just prophesying and Saul also co uh, got into it. The question that the person was asking, who is speaking into their lives? Who is bringing correction? Who is speaking into your life? 
You may be gifted, you may be anointed, but who speaks into your life? Who brings you correction? Who tells you do this or don't do it that way? And I want to say, the question they asked, but who is their father? That means that band of prophets were a headless prophet, prophetic band. Nobody speaks into their lives. Nobody corrects them. Saul caught an anointing, but the anointing he caught was a headless anointing. That's an anointing without leadership. No wonder. No wonder. Do you remember Saul? Nobody speaks into his life. Hey, he caught a headless anointing. And the interesting thing about it is that that headlessness, that is rejection of leadership, rejection of authority, rejection of somebody who will speak into your life. That was what Saul did. And now comes the interesting thing. He caught a headless anointing. I'm not surprised. If you remember, when he died, he was decapitated. And he was nailed to the walls of Bashan, headless. Be careful what kind of anointing you catch. Be careful what you sit under. Be careful when nobody speaks into your life, where you are a law unto yourself, and nobody has a right to bring correction to you. Nobody brings correction to you. No matter who you are, no matter what you say, there must be people that will speak into your life. Excuse me. The president has a council of state that is elderly statesmen or elderly people who will speak and guide them and tell them, no, don't do this this way. Hey, as for you, the gamma will say, Odai, Odai, you're bigger than everybody. So nobody speaks into your life. Be very careful. So you may catch an anointing, but who speaks into your life? Who brings correction? And who tells you, do it this way or that way? Well, for me, this is it. This is what I think. No matter who you are, you need somebody to speak into your life. And whether you are big, or you are tall, you are a rich man, you are a beggar man, or whatever. I won't say thief, because I don't believe you are a thief. You need somebody to speak into your life. But who is your father? See you the next time.